All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Today I just want to talk about all the manga I'm currently reading that are currently publishing, with a few exceptions. So to maybe quantify things, I'm just going to throw them on a tier list, and here's our tiers. Must reads, great manga, pretty good manga, stuff that's not bad, ones I read on autopilot, so if I see it, I read it, and then get on with my life. Stuff I'm going to drop now, and lastly, some manga I just feel I haven't read enough yet to properly judge them. So, first up we have The 100 Girlfriends, who really, 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 really love you. If I see a new chapter, I'll read it, so we're going to throw this in the autopilot tier. I'm not heavily looking forward to it every week. The stakes kind of disappeared after the inciting incident, so he can have a bunch of girlfriends without it being malicious in any way. It's pretty funny and it makes a ton of references, a lot of which I don't even get, but most of it is just there's a bunch of girlfriends and hijinks, stuff happening. I don't know. I am excited for chapter 100, which should be next, so maybe something cool will happen, but we're nowhere near 100 girlfriends, so we've got a long ways to go here. Next we have Blue Box, and I think this is pretty good. I like a good romance and I've come to learn, I also like a good sports manga, and I think this is a really good combo of the two. The main characters are romantic leads, and really all the characters have something to focus on and be motivated by other than romance in their sports, badminton and basketball and rhythmic gymnastics, and that really flushes them out a lot more since they have real aspirations besides, I like this girl, I hope she likes me, and I like that it hasn't been tropey, there hasn't been a stupid misunderstanding thing so far. It's understandable that they don't know each other's or their own feelings since they're so focused on their sports and they don't come off as stupid like characters normally do when they don't figure things out like who they like. Also Team Hina. Now we have I want to hold Aonokun so badly I could die and I'm also gonna throw this in pretty good. We start out with a girl who just kind of is existing without a purpose and then she starts liking a guy because he was nice to her like a single time I think. So she confesses and they start dating for some reason, but they know nothing about each other. Then he fucking dies, but she'd already made him her whole life since she didn't have one, so she's gonna kill herself to be with him. But his ghost stops her. And that looks like on the surface it might be a love story between a girl and a ghost, but it's, it's a lot different than that and it's much creepier. They're trying to figure out why he's there and why he died. And I like a good mystery, and it also incorporates lots of supernatural, and psychological, and, and darker stuff, and it can be kind of scary sometimes, which is cool. Each of the main characters have been developed very well, and I like the ways that it explores death and, and loss. There's some pretty interesting ways it does that, and it's not all doom and gloom. It can be pretty funny as well. Berserk. It's Berserk, so I have to put it in must-read. I'd get crucified if I didn't put it there, and I want to put it there anyways. I'm glad that we can definitively say it's currently publishing now, since it's going to be coming back soon. I feel there's not much I can say about such an iconic manga. I think I prefer the stuff before the eclipse, but only slightly. Rest in peace, Tamira, and thank you for your godly art, sir. Next is Boy's Abyss, and I'm putting this into the autopilot tier. I mean, it's a big dumpster fire, but... Some some drama can be entertaining, and this is at times. But I feel like the whole situation seems to be coming back full circle. It's looping. We get the same fucked up scenario over and over, which has sapped my initial interest. Also, I don't like rape. Okay, we've got Chojin X, and this gets to go in pretty good. I haven't read anything else from Yoshida Sweep, but I do really like his art. And the Chojin powers so far that we've seen are all really cool. It feels like we've just barely started yet, but we're at like chapter 20, and it seems like it go in any direction still, I have no clue. Wouldn't be cool if that lasted forever, but the misdirections within the story have been really interesting, and I'm overall interested to see how society and the society of Chojin's work, and how the really interesting dynamic between Tokyo and Azuma plays out over a long time. That's if they don't die all of a sudden, which I feel like is possible. Now we've got... Kuprum no Haniyome, or The Kuprum's Bride, and we'll put it in not bad. I want to put it in pretty good, but uh, actually, fuck it. Namo's art is so good that I'm putting this in pretty good. All the characters she draws are cute, and this is her currently publishing manga, though I've only found about 14 chapters so far. 
The titular character is a lolly gal who's of age. Amazing. They're in college in this and they're already in a relationship and going to get married. It's great. A really cute relationship between her and her fiance who's a cuprum or coppersmith. And it's interesting to learn about copper working and the artisan industry in Japan through her husband. And I like learning and their cute little relationship. All right, Die Dark is going in not bad. To me, it feels like there hasn't been an impactful inciting incident yet, but I love Hayashida's gritty, dirty art style and her wackiness. I really like Dora Dora, so I have faith that this will become at least pretty good. So far, it's just meh for me, I guess. The powers are all unique, as expected from her, and I'm excited to see where things go. But so far, I'm not running back to read it. Well, I am, but it doesn't have me fully hooked. It just takes like a month to get a chapter, so I get impatient. Dun da dun, dan da dan, is going in not bad. And I can't really put my finger on why. It's very funny. I like yokai, and there's a lot of those, and the aliens are also pretty cool. It's just not hitting it for me at the moment. This last chapter kind of makes me want to move it up, though, and I can't really explain why. I know a lot of people really like this. And I'd say if everything was as funny as when his balls were missing, then this would definitely be a must-read. I think maybe it's just trying to handle too much, what with yokai and aliens and the possession of some of our characters' bodies by different yokai and the psychic powers. It's just, it's just a lot. I don't know. I think maybe it's just struggling a little bit to stay cohesive. Gambare Doki-chan, or Senpai is Mine, is definitely going into the autopilot. It's really, really good color art, some very, very cute stuff, but there's just not much substance there. It says there's like 63 chapters, but they're all five pages tops. I think it was just Twitter drawings, which turn into a serialization, which makes sense. And Doki-chan just fires some neurons, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read on. Elusive Samurai gets a not bad. I like the setting in historical Japan. I think it's the Kamakura Shogunate era. We've got a former prince trying to retake his kingdom with some loyal retainers, which is a concept I enjoy. And there's the incorporation of fantastical abilities into this classic historical fiction, which is really interesting. I like that idea. It just doesn't hold my interest that well. Maybe it's the pacing, I don't know. Or it could just be the fact that they're all supposed to be 10 years old, which I cannot suspend my disbelief for. Next we've got Fabiniku, or Fantasy Bishoujo Juniko Jisanto, which is also going to go in not bad. Maybe my favorite thing nowadays is seeing the comments from the husband and wife mangaka team at the end of each chapter since they're pretty funny, and the chapters recently have been relatively short. I found that I like cross-dressing manga, and this goes a bit further with full-on gender bending, but it's nice that there's no creepy swap gender th shenanigans going on. And there's some very funny moments in this, but the overarching plot, I think, is just a typical isekai demon king slaying story, just with a lot of interesting tangents. But the plot's gotten a lot slower, which is why it's down and not bad as opposed to pretty good. But it's chugging along. So so no free ran, or free ran beyond journey's end, or free ran after the funeral. Must read. I don't know what to tell you. If you haven't heard of this, then go fucking learn about it. And if you do know about it and haven't read it, I don't know what you're doing. Go read this shit. It's amazing. The first chapter is a masterpiece, which should be enough to convince you to read the rest. So I don't think I need to put a ton of work in to getting you to do so. Every character we get to learn about has a really interesting backstory and is well fleshed out. And there's an overarching theme of cherishing the journey and not just worrying about getting to the destination. Because time is fleeting. And that's just nice to hear sometimes. Fu fuijo koibito miman, or more than a couple, less than lovers. Hmm. Well, I can't read it on autopilot if I've only ever read it all at once, and then no new chapters could be found online subsequently. So I guess it goes in not bad. The premise is really outside the realm of being believable. For this year of high school, students live together in an apartment away from home with a person of the opposite sex in a home economics style husband and wife project where they get points for being a good husband and wife. They're somehow observed in their apartment and doled out points. It doesn't make sense. Then we get a love polygon slash harem 
and overall it's just like a, a will they won't they is who's going to realize their feelings and who's going to get their heart broken in a bunch of pieces drama for drama's sake if the main character could pull his head out of his ass i think things would be pretty good and the best part about it is gals i, I guess i really like gals so what can i say we have hitomi chan wa hitomi shiri or hitomi is shy with strangers i read this on autopilot but i'm gonna drop it Hitomi isn't even shy with strangers anymore, and I feel like she never really was. It seems like this is just big girl and small boy make a romance. And while it's not like I have a problem with that, it's just pretty boring. Dosanko Garu, or Hokkaido girls, are super adorable. I hate to start with this, but it's hard for me to think Fubuki is adorable when it looks like she has two jackfruits in her shirt instead of boobs. I'm also going to drop this. I do think it has some pretty cute art. I was enjoying it at first. We have our main guy moved to Hokkaido and falling in love. But as soon as it became a harem, I think it just fucked up the dynamic between the main two love interests too much. It's been a while since then, so maybe I should have seen the writing on the wall. Not that I hate harems, but... The story just isn't my cup of tea recently. Learning about Hokkaido is really interesting and probably my favorite part though. Nearly every chapter starts with a place, tradition, or animal from Hokkaido and some information, which I really appreciate. Interspecies reviewers. I'd read on auto if a chapter ever came out. See what new brothel they go to, laugh, then get on with my life. We want to talk about Kaguya, or Kaguya Samo o Kataritai is the Yonkama about Chuchin Academy's mass media club and how they're obsessed with Kaguya. I read the first chapter, but stopped because I didn't want spoilers for the third season of the anime since it was coming out soon, and we just finally saw the two main characters of this manga in the anime like a couple episodes ago. I can't judge it yet since I've read one chapter, but I'm going to catch up once the season's over. Similarly, with Kaguya-sama Love is War, I caught up to the end of the second season of the anime and the manga, then I stopped because I didn't want spoilers for the third season. But it's great. The only reason I am not putting it in must-read is because the anime is amazing. I think it's so good I'd, I'd rather watch the first two seasons than read that part, although I, I, I did also read it after watching it, so who knows. I'm going to catch up once the season's over, and I'm sure I'll still think it's great, and maybe a must-read, honestly. If you don't like Kaguya-sama, then fuck you. Now we've got Kanojo Hitomi Shirimas, or the Sumi from Rent-A-Girlfriend spinoff. Uh, Sumi's cute, but she doesn't talk. Not much happens in the manga. I didn't find anything at all that interesting in it. It's just her not being able to do stuff since she can't talk. Or her being able to do stuff despite not being able to talk, which is supposed to be cute, I guess. So I've decided to drop it, especially after finding out there were six chapters I hadn't read yesterday, so I finished them. I didn't need a whole chapter of the author telling me about a fictional magical girl series that Sumi likes. It was a waste of time. But that's the author's specialty. Wasting our time. Conversely, Kubo won't let me be a mob? That's pretty good. Kubo's really cute, which I guess I feel weird saying since she's a middle schooler. But the middle school age makes the dynamic between the two main characters, Kubo and Shireishi, believable. Because they're teasing each other and not understanding or expressing that they like each other. And that's just basic middle school behavior. When older characters do this, and when there's more obvious signs that the people like you or you like them or whatever, it's just super annoying and makes them seem stupid or oblivious. The beating around the bush of just dating already is understandable here. Our main character Shiraishi is such a mob that he's invisible to all but a select few, and it's always super sweet when he's surprised and pleased by Kubo noticing him since he's been deprived of it for so long. It's also really funny, and all their friends are really supportive and stupid and funny. Moshley, Magic and Muscles. Definitely an autopilot one these days. The gimmick was bound to get old at some point in time, like, oh boy, he uses them muscles to fight the magic. I don't know where else it was going to go, you know? 
Not like it's bad, it's still entertaining, but it's just a gag manga. Initially, the story was kind of unique in how Mashley was raised and had to go to school and the interactions with the first couple friends he made, but for me now it's stale. Side characters are getting little arcs, which is kind of cool. Maybe it'll get good again, or better. But for now, it's just like, ho ho, I wonder what's gonna happen. Is he gonna use muscles and beat magic? Yeah, that's all he does. What do you mean? Next is Metalist. I'd say I haven't read enough to judge it yet. I think I've read four of the seven chapters I've found or so. It's about the ice skating scene at the junior level and kind of how cutthroat the world of ice skating is, especially when you're younger. And both my parents ice skated, my mom so at the younger level. She was in a similar situation to the main character here, getting started in the sport a little late, which is like 10, and that's wild to be late. You're fucked, especially in women's ice skating if you don't come out of the womb straight onto the ice. So I'm interested in seeing more of what the junior level of ice skating is like, and also how it works in Japan. So far, I think it's pretty good and, you know, a bit eye-opening. Konohira Mendoksai. Gonna put that in auto. It is funny, but nothing I'm gonna write home about. I do like the sarcasm and the way the two main characters just constantly shit on each other and Carla's interesting personality that she has. Other than that, it's just... It's just comedy in a fantasy setting, and, and that's about it. Miriko-chan. It's pretty good. Cool premise, having to pretend she can't see all this scary stuff going on. And the fact that it can be pretty scary to read sometimes. Well, maybe not scary. I'm not, like, pissing my pants while I read it. Spooky's probably a better word. Especially when a ghost monster thing whatever they're called, looks exactly like a normal human. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, oh fuck, oh jeez. She acknowledged one of those things. Time to get the fuck out of here because they're going to kill her. That shit can be scary or spooky, I guess. Shit. There's like zero ecchi in this, so watching the anime was a bit confusing. And psychics having actual power is always funny since they're so stupid in reality. And... I love Mob Psycho 100. That's tangent. Now a story's developing in it too, so seeing how this other world works is gonna be really interesting. If only it would come out more than bi-monthly or whatever the fuck. Next is Monster Number 8, or Kaiju Number 8, or Kaiju Hachigo. And I wanna put Monster Number 8 in Not Bad, because recently I've been getting annoyed about Ichikawa and Furuhashi. Furuhashi is a literal shonen boy with his spiky teeth yelling and the power of friendship, and that's just been too much for me. Especially since the chapters have been coming out so sparsely recently, so it feels like it's just been the two of them as the focus for like months. But I think it's going to move on from that now, and the rest of it has been pretty good. I really like the designs and drawings of the kaijus, and the setup of the story is also interesting. Obviously, we have the shonen classic where part of the evil is inside of our main character, but he's using it for good. But that can always still be done well. And the side characters are well explored, the military setting is decent, which is important since that's what's setting it apart from other shonen where the main character has part of the evil inside of him. And I'm considering moving this into pretty good. I guess we'll see what happens in editing. Now we've got Mystery to Iu Nakare, or Do Not Say Mystery. That's a must read for me. You know, I made a video about it because I like it. I love mysteries, and it has good ones, despite trying to say it isn't one at all. Not much more I can say. It's really popular in Japan for a reason, because it's really good. I did make a whole ass video about it for a reason, but probably not a very good one, so I'll link another one if you want something actually informative. One Punch Man! And Murata's art alone carries this into great. Because holy fuck, some of these panels, especially the recent ones, like where he's drawing the whole world, my god. And I love One. Mob Psycho's my favorite manga. His storytelling's very good here, but recently it's just been battle after battle it seems, so I'd say it's only great. It has its moments of must-read, 
but it's not all the time, so overall it's it's pretty solid. The Garo stuff is dragging out quite a bit, but I really like the large cast of characters, despite them being one of the main causes, it's just been battle after battle. The whole cast of heroes and villains are unique in both powers and personality, and everyone's funny. Oshinoko must read. I clearly like Akasaka Aka from the Kaguya stuff, but Mango's art is some of my favorite. It is the only reason, really, I read Scum's Wish. Her art is just so good. But the story is also absolutely amazing. I think while it's very different from Kaguya, Aka's writing is just as good. Just exploring these different entertainment industries within Japan and the toxicity, exploitation, danger, inner workings, and harshness of entertainment culture in general. And the aspect of them being, spoilers, reincarnations and how that comes into play within the story to drive us through these different parts of the entertainment world is just amazing. Ren a girlfriend or Kanojo Okarishimas. Get dropped. Actually, you were already dropped, but I brought you here to shit on you, I guess. I got to chapter 192, then decided, fuck this. I don't need to deal with this shit every week. If I miss a week, I don't think I could deal with reading more than a chapter in a row anymore. Since there's zero progression. I actually quite enjoyed the arc where they were making the movie. And it seemed like real progress was being made. And they actually developed a relationship. And were doing a pretty good job of doing so. Then it was all just a figment of our imagination. There was less advancement in Kazuma and Shizuru's relationship than there was a fucking war in Ba Sing Se. Next up is Ore to Akama no Blues, or Me and the Devil Blues, The Unreal Life of Robert Johnson. And I think Robert Johnson is an interesting figure in music history, though I know little about him. I do know that he supposedly sold his soul to the devil in order to become the greatest blues guitarist of all time. And the historical aspect, like with Elusive Samurai, is really interesting to me. And what he's done so far in the part of the manga that I've read is sell his soul to the devil to become the greatest blues guitarist ever. The manga did a very good job of making the devil very creepy and sly, and the whole setting's very eerie. And there was also an interesting use of time dilation where Robert Johnson's just in a bar, playing the blues, drinking, hanging out, gambling, for just a night. And then he comes home and it's been months. He got good at the guitar, but the devil took his life away from him. And I think this is all I got through before I stopped reading. I don't know why, probably just long chapters. I mainly put this on here to motivate myself to finally read it again, and technically it is current, but it's been on hiatus for years. So it's, it's, I haven't read enough yet to really judge it. Now we've got Sakamoto Days. This will also go in pretty good. Sakamoto is cool. He's a badass, an ex-assassin with a no-killing rule. He left the game to be with his wife, which is cute, and now he looks out of shape. But they don't use that same gag every chapter just for laughs. All the sidekicks, quote-unquote, he has are great, and it's funny that they all work at his kombini. They're a great found family. Each is given good development, which is why I say pretty good. Shin is getting a lot of character development, but I think it's funny. He's kind of like a little kid trying to impress his dad, Sakamoto, who's not his real dad. Now that we have a real enemy to fight as well, there's been a lot more action, and the plot's really moving forward in an interesting direction. It's no longer just, hey, look at this guy. He used to be an assassin, and now he's fat. Now we've got School Zone Girls. Somehow I'm going to put this in must read. I think this may be the first Yuri I've read, but genre doesn't really matter. It's fucking hilarious. The two main girls are so stupid, they're extremely entertaining. And while their interactions together are the funniest, the interactions between all the characters are just really well done. Everyone has a unique personality, 
and even the auxiliary characters end up getting chapters of their own, and even their side characters are cool and interesting and have their own things. It's not all comedy. There's a bit of romance, a heavy influence of romance, but it doesn't really get played up. And there's some drama, and some things can be a little philosophical. I really enjoy it. I mean, I bought some fucking volumes of it, so whatever that says. I watched a great video about it that convinced me to read it. I'll try to find it and link it, because I sure did a terrible job of convincing anyone to read it. Yatsude Supremacy. Now, Shimeji Simulation, and while I have read 10 of the 40 to 50 chapters that are out so far, I feel like it just flew over my head. All of it. It makes me actually feel like an imbecile. I think there's some philosophical metaphors happening, but the only philosophy coming to my mind when I read it is, I know that I know nothing, or I know that I am dumb as shit. And all jokes aside, this is from the same mangaka as Girls Last Tour, which I also want to read. I just started this first. I feel like I'm not getting the higher concept a lot of the times, but maybe there isn't one. I, I've only seen female characters, so I think this is also a Yuri. There's a pretty funny relationship between the two girls who are on the cover there. And there's lots of strange things going on in the world and with the people there. I mean, the fact that they've joined the hole digging club at school is just peak comedy. And our main girl with mushrooms growing out of her head, Shimeji, is entertaining with her blasé, uninviting and snarky attitude. But I don't want to judge it yet because I feel like I haven't understood shit. So we'll put it down in that bottom tier. And we've got Spy Family or Spy X Family or Spix Family. That's going to be a pretty good. That found family, familial relationship is just moi. It's amazing. Their interactions are just really cute, you know. The fact that they're becoming a family. All the action, spy stuff is always cool. And we've got assassin stuff. There's even some school drama and romance. It really has a bit of everything. And that's why it's appealing to so many people. The wholesome relationship with the Forgers just holds everything together, and it's understandable why almost everybody loves it. We just got some Twilight backstory that I thought was really good, and some of the side characters are getting an increasing presence, which just fleshes out the world nicely. It's borderline great, and I think it will be great soon enough. I'm sure I don't have to be that convincing or explanatory as to why I like it, since most people that see it do enjoy. Suicide Girl, we'll put this in, not bad. It's a cool concept, I guess. Trying to prevent suicide is good, obviously. Though I don't know how I feel about them having to kill themselves to unleash their powers to fight against suicide. The powers are cool, though. The motivations of the characters somewhat make sense, somewhat don't, though. But I don't read it on autopilot. Much that's due to the art. The phobias, or the monsters that cause suicides are mainly very creepy and grotesque. And holy fuck, the thighs on them girls is thick. We've got, my new wife is forcing herself to smile and I'm gonna drop it because I'm tired of the gimmick. The title is just what the husband thinks, but it's, it's not true. The whole thing here is that it's an arranged marriage, I think. They actually do like each other, they just don't know the other person actually likes them. He's nervous around her, she's nervous around him, but they really think each other are hot. And they actually really like each other, but neither of them know the other person thinks that. So they're always just blushing and embarrassed when anything happens between them. But they can't show it in front of the other person because, I don't know, ancient Japan reasons. But everyone else outside of them is like, oh my god. This couple loves each other so much, and they're so hot, and they're so cool. But I don't care. After 63 chapters, I do not care anymore. Twin Star Exorcists is something I've just recently started reading, so I'm only on chapter 31. There's over a hundred and counting. So I guess I'm going to put it into the I haven't read enough yet to judge. 
I was under the impression there'd be a bit more romance, but maybe that's coming later. So far I'm thinking not bad. The main limiting factor so far is Mr. Rokuro and Mado. He is way too much of a shonen protagonist for me. I want him to stop yelling all the time because it's super annoying. But we'll put it down here and haven't read enough to judge yet for now. Next is Undead Unluck. Earlier on, I would have said pretty good. Probably because I think the negator power system is really unique, and I like the way they figure out different ways to use and combine them. But I feel like it's about to just reset everything, start over from the beginning, which I feel is sometimes what happens when the author doesn't know what to do next. So they go back to what worked before, instead of pushing on, they put off until later, and I hate that. Recently it's been a bit drawn out and a little boring for me, probably because it's just been Andy and no Foucault for a while. I think the author uses the powers well, it just feels like he didn't know how to end things or didn't want to end things yet, which is monetarily understandable. Still that'll put it in not bad. Watari-kun no XX ga Hokai Sanzen, or Watari's XX is on the brink of collapse. To me, this English title makes it sound like a gay hentai, like Watari's ass is on the brink of collapse, but it, but it ain't. Similar to more than a couple less than lovers, I haven't had anything to read since I caught up, so it's, it's not autopilot. It's just not bad. It's a similar level of trashy drama with some harem as well. The sister's kind of sus, but I do like the girl on the cover, Tachibana. She's what keeps me reading. She's very interesting, and there's still some mysteries you got to figure out. The summary makes it seem a lot more dark and serious than it actually is. Reading over some overly dramatic stuff every once in a while is pretty entertaining, so that's what keeps me going. There's also a Yandere. I don't think I've actually read one yet, so it's, it's interesting. And the last of the currently serializing manga is ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. I think I gotta put this in pretty good. It's pretty funny that there aren't even a hundred things on the list yet though. I know there's definitely more, but I've only found 23 English chapters unfortunately. But I like zombie apocalypse stuff, and this is a pretty simple premise, done really funny, and done well. The main character makes a bucket list of things he wants to do now that life as he knows it is over. And they go do it, and shenanigans ensue. That's about all I gotta say about it. Now we have a light novel, or series of light novels. We've got Bunny Girl Senpai, or Seishun Butearo series. Now I watched the anime, then the movie, then decided to pick up the books because I enjoyed it quite a bit, so I already knew I liked it. Slam it in pretty good. Now reading the light novels should increase my weeb level. I think, and this is true with every light novel I've read so far, most likely because it's a whole entire book being translated, the writing itself isn't amazing. But I really like the story. I just finished the first three novels, and so far, not much has been different. There's been a couple scenes that were left out of the anime, but they did a good job adapting it, I think, overall. I'm excited now that the most recent novel to come out takes place after the movie, so I've got to catch up to the novels. Just have to prepare myself to ball my fucking eyes out again once Kaede stops acting like a little girl. But maybe I'll talk more about that later. Now to the manga that are still being translated but are finished in Japan. A story about doing XX to girls from different species. I think I'll put this in not bad. It's uh, it's Yuri. Our main character is the only human at a school where every girl is a different species. And she likes to make everything sexual. She isn't the only one either. And pretty much everything she does is consensual though I guess she's sexually harassing everyone which... You know, that's not great. I don't know. I just think it's funny, mostly in how many different species are showing up. That's what keeps the gag from getting old. There's always something new that can be done to a girl made out of bones, or a cockroach girl, or the really perverted angel. 
I've only found like 20 of the 90 published chapters translated, but it seems to be ongoing at the moment. It's just some stupid fun, and I really like yokai, and there's a lot of them. I know there's other jokes too that are going over my head due to cultural or language barriers and stuff like puns, but even still it's already really funny. Another one still being translated is Crazy Food Truck, and I would say pretty good. I'm only at 7 chapters out of like 20 in the finished product. Physical volumes are coming, so I can go to Barnes & Noble and read it off the shelf if it doesn't get translated online. But volume 2 isn't until like October. But, you know, food manga, hell yeah. Action manga, pretty cool. Post-apocalyptic setting, always cool. And we've got a wombo combo of all that with Crazy Food Truck. The main character is a badass, similar to Sakamoto from Sakamoto Days. Except for the no killing rule, he doesn't have that shit. It's been a thrill of seven chapters. Oh, and there were titties. And last of these is 5 Minutes With You at a Convenience Store. It's short episodes of a high school boy who works at a convenience store and a mid-twenties office worker who goes to that store and thinks he looks like her cat. So she thinks he's cute. And he thinks she's cute, probably because she's small, and also she is definitely cute. But we don't spend a ton of time with them. We see his perspective of her coming to the convenience store and him being nervous about her. Generally a little cute misunderstanding between the two occurs. Then the next chapter will be her perspective, which clears up what exactly the misunderstanding was, and either what she was doing before coming in, or after leaving, and being with her cat, who has similar eyes to this dude. It's just a bit of diabetes, I guess. There's no in illicit relationship yet, 53 chapters out of 94 so far, and the translator assured us of no weird shit. Speaking of the translator, he's definitely, he or she's definitely, he or she or whoever, is definitely a highlight, giving lots of info about food and culture that were mentioned in each chapter at the end. It's pretty funny as well, but clowning on the manager of the store is definitely the peak of the comedy. And then, stuff I'm reading that's totally done and translated, Any Al and Dewiella, or Any Dewey. All the chapters of Any Dewey are out there, not necessarily easy to find, but I think you could also buy it digitally or physically if that's your style. This is from Kamome Shirahama, who's also a mangaka of Witch Hat Atelier, and apparently did some DC and Marvel art. And the art is amazing. The two girls we follow also have some godly fashion. They're an angel and a devil who are friends, well, really frenemies since they're always at odds. It's only 15 chapters, so it's nothing too long. The story isn't anything complicated, it's just hijinks the two get into over taking human souls and fashion-related incidents, and I'm like 11 chapters into it, so I'm almost done. They like fashion, they don't necessarily like each other because they're at odds uh, morally, religiously, whatever you want to say about an angel and a demon. Overall... It makes me want to start Witch Hat Atelier once I finish it. And there was one chapter that was really impactful on me. Chapter 7, I believe. Just about sacrifice, really. Cheese in the Trap. I think it goes in pretty good. I just finished Season 2 of 4. I guess I have a lot to say about it. I don't like Jung. He creeps me the fuck out. It's not just when he was being violent at the end of season two, because I think I'd have the exact same reaction. He just seems like he's only pretending to have any emotions. But since he's on the cover with Soul uh, for like seasons one through four, I'm sure they'll end up together. I do like Inhobeik more. He has some substance to him. There's a backstory there and stuff for him to work out. I just don't really sympathize with Jung's dad didn't pay enough attention to him or something about his mom, meaning it's totally cool for him to be loco, it wasn't his fault. One thing I was a bit annoyed with initially was the fact that there's zero communication between characters, and especially between Seoul and Jung when they're starting dating. I think this is like a, a Korean culture thing, you can't show your feelings or something, I don't know. But to me, if you're going to say you're dating someone, you better fucking tell them when you're not pleased. 
she's done so now, which is, I think that's pretty good development. And I think that's what keeps going on. Everyone appears to be developing, or at least everyone that's good, since, you know, even in real life, people that are off their rocker never really seem to learn. I also think it does a good job at showing that what there is to fear as a woman in the world. You know, since I'm a dude, I don't have experience with, like, a guy stalking me and being scared to tell him off since he might murk me or something. It's well done. It, it makes you understand the fear there. I would put it higher if our male lead Jung had anything I liked at all about him. Even when he taught the kid her numbers, it just seemed shallow. Like, he seemed sweet at first, but then it was almost like he was manipulating her and showing off to Seoul simultaneously. I hope he learns a lesson about his blackmailing and manipulation, but we'll see. I also hope I learn what the characters' names actually are. And last, but almost least, Psycho May, or Psycho Love Comedy. Now, Psycho May is a light novel I started reading because I happened upon Volume 1 for free. So then I bought Volume 2 on Thrift Books because I thought, okay, I'll collect it all and read it since it's only like seven volumes. Then I read the first volume. It wasn't terrible, but I stopped being able to suspend my disbelief near the end. And there's a lot to disbelief. Our guy gets framed for mass murder and thrown in child murderer camp where he gets a harem of killer girls. He's pretty much a self-insert with not too much more personality than being strong and not a murderer and girls loving him. Which is what every boy aspires to be, am I right? Especially that not a murderer part. Then I read the second book when it arrived. He just adds Axe Murderer Senpai Girl to his harem. And I did all this without mentioning that a literal living weapon is only not killing him all this time because of love. Even though she really wants to kill him? I don't understand. And to top it all off, his sister is such a brocon, she decides to do her own school shooting so she can be with him at child murderer camp. And that's where we drop this shit. So yeah, that's everything I'm reading and dropping at the moment. Maybe I'll do something like this again later, but just with newer stuff. Or maybe updating on how this currently serializing things are going. Now that I'm dropping a bunch of stuff, partially just because I made this video, I feel okay to finally say fuck these series is. I can add some new stuff. Hopefully those are really good and maybe I'll enjoy them enough to make a damn shitty video about them. See you later mother fricker dickers.